sales has become a dirty little word, uh, but put simply, sales is the ability to help people meet a need for a solution or service that you provide. And well, at least ethical sales, that is. You know, we got a lot of people sadly out there. You know, when I was growing up in Chicago, I thought the sales guy, you know, right, the corner boys, he would make out, he'd be the sales guy, he'd have this lavish lifestyle, he'd had money, he had a car, he had girls, he had parties, et cetera. But at what expense? So my framing of salespeople was where somebody wins, but yet sadly, somebody loses. And I think also in the dog eat dog world, also in, in entrepreneurship, there's gonna ha- you're gonna have that element in any business. You're gonna have that dog eat dog world anytime there's an opportunity to make money, to get a position of power, to 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 accelerate, to advance above somebody else. Sadly, there's always gonna be that element of unethical practices, of distasteful uh, business uh, practices. And you just have to get over that part because just like there's bad doctors, there's also good doctors. Just like there's uh, bad restaurants, there's also good restaurants. Uh, just like there's bad theme parks, there's also good theme parks, right? So you just got to focus your attention on what is good and process and have the awareness to process what is not. So my team asked me to react to some videos here on sales. And the first one here is on Tristan Tate selling a cigar. So let's take a look at Tristan Tate selling a cigar. Would you say you still have the sales skills in you? Love to have a cigar right 100%. now. 100%. Yeah? If I went broke tomorrow, the, the problem is because I'm famous, the Tate brand in and of itself is worth so much. I couldn't go broke. If I went broke, I could make the money back somehow. Yeah. But I could start selling cigars or ties or something. Yeah. So if I told you right now, sell me this cigar, putting you on the spot. You're putting me on the spot to sell you this cigar? Yep. Okay, what's your experience with cigars? Do you like cigars? <sighs> Sometimes they can get to my throat a bit. And then uh, end up coughing or something like that. Well, that's your problem. That's because you've been buying the lower quality cigars. What's your typical budget when you purchase each stick? Mm, I think the most I've spent on a cigar is probably about 200 pounds. See, well, that's your problem right there because this cigar actually costs $350 per cigar. And the way that the tobacco is aged before they roll it is the key. The smoothness of the cigar comes not when you make it, not when you roll it, not when you put the label on it, but it's the process after picking the tobacco to to drying it, flavoring it, spicing it, and aging it. And that's where the smoothness comes in, like a fine whiskey or a fine cognac. So what you need to do is smoke fewer cigars per week. Don't go for three or four at 100, 200 bucks each. Just treat yourself every Friday night to one of these. This is truly exceptional. The coughing will stop. The smoothness will be there. You'll notice a a greater enjoyment from your cigar cigar experience than you've ever enjoyed before. It's $350. Do you want this? Uh, I don't know, Tristan. $350 seems a bit out of my budget, man. Well, you know what? If you can't afford it, that's perfectly fine because I have customers who can. And things like this, they don't stay on the market for very long. So this is definitely going to go if I put it in the humidor at the cigar store. So if you don't want to buy it, it's no problem for me. And you could stick to what you have and keep coughing. Gears have got to be right there. Light the cigar up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can stop right there. All right, so how would you guys rate this sales pitch? Scale of 1 to 10. 10, very convincing. I want to buy a cigar or one. Still kicking tires. I don't know, man. Um, I would rate this, by the way, I like Tristan Tate. Uh, I, I like the Tate brand. I like what they stand for. Um, looking forward to an interview with them. But listen, let me do a little push, pushback. I don't think it was very good. Here's why I don't think it was very good. And I think the host was just being indulging, I guess, just absorbing it in because he's there with Tristan Tate. Obviously, it's, both the Tate brothers speak so well. They're so eloquent. They're so well-spoken. They're so well-read. And it's hard not to like them. So I think as a salesperson, one, one thing you got to realize is that you have to be put together because people, if you're in sales, if you're offering a product or service, you're asking for people's vote, you're asking for people, people's buy-in, you got to look the part. You got to look the part of being successful. You got to be well-groomed, you got to be well-dressed, well-put together. And that's what the Tate brothers and what other lot of successful salespeople that we've seen has done, has, they got that accomplished. You're, you're easier on the eye. You don't want your eye being a distract. You want your, your physical appearance to be a distraction or an objection to why people don't want to do business with you. Now, that being said, people may not like the way you look. They may not like the, the color of your skin, sadly. They may not like the way you sound. They may not like the words that come out your mouth. <coughs> That's okay. But all I'm saying is people, sadly, judge a book by its cover. Yeah.